leader Mike Goodwin for the largest and most prestigious Supercross event in the world with some of the world's top Supercross competitors. Brock Glover, David Bailey, and Mark Barnett, to name a few, as they compete for the largest Supercross payday in history. Rose Bowl, home of the Super Bowl, the Rose Bowl Football Classic, and UCLA football action. Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Huffman. Tonight, action of a different type. Young gladiators in helmets, shoulder pads, and protective leathers, but they're riding exotic two-wheeled motocrossers. The Super Bowl of motocross, the Miller High Life Super Bowl of motocross. With me to call the action, Bruce Penhall, a star of chips and a two-time world speedway champion himself. This track looks tough, buddy. I'll tell you what, Larry, I have so much respect for these gladiators out here tonight. We have degrees reaching up to 90 degrees tonight. We had a shower storm which washed away most of the smog this morning. But I'll tell you what, the heat's gonna be a factor. Plus, this is the roughest super cross track I've ever seen. The heat in the 90s, the humidity almost that high. It's gonna be some action tonight. The fans coming into the Rose Bowl. It turned out to be the largest sports crowd assembled that weekend. And right in the middle of the front row, David Bailey looking at a payday of $198,000 if he can pull it off tonight. But as luck would have it, he goes up against Brock Glover, the Yamaha Golden Boy, the superstar who's won the Super Bowl twice before. He's up against Glover in heat number one. With us down on the track, we have Brock Glover, the Golden Boy of Supercross racing. Brock, what do you think about the Rose Bowl here having a Supercross? Well, it's really a nice track, Bruce. They laid it out actually on the plain surface, and uh, there's many spots out here. We are on the grass, and all of us really like to ride on the grass. It's you know, really good traction, and, and it, when it dirt breaks, up like it is here it's uh it's really fun to ride on so the track will be super and i think the race is going to be really good now a lot of the riders have said that this track is probably going to be the, the one of the most demanding super cross races you've ever been in is that true is there any truth to that well i think so anytime you ride the super bowl for one everybody gets extra excited and uh, goes for it a little harder the adrenaline gets flowing plus the track like i said is pretty you know pretty difficult and uh Anytime you get those factors involved, the racing gets real tough, so it's always a tough race. Okay, you have 12-foot jumps, 6-foot high berms. Will that cause any problems to you in, in the night? I'm sure you're used to them, but uh, they seem to be a little higher than normal. Yeah, I think so. They add a little extra height to the jumps to make us fly a little higher, a little farther, make the show a little better for the spectators. So there are a couple difficult ones, especially the finish line. It's a real steep approach, and you come out accelerating real hard, and it's almost a wall that you have to climb. So there are a few out there. But the rider's set. Lean forward on the bikes. The gate's set to drop. It's down. And David Bailey gets a hole shot on the inside with Glover on the outside into that first turn. Glover goes wide, and Bailey slips by on the inside. So David Bailey, a beautiful start for the young man from Axton, Virginia. Bailey in front. Glover running in second spot. Up to the hairpin turn. Glover goes by on the inside. Glover flying off the jump. Takes the lead away from Bailey in the first 10 seconds. But Bailey comes right back. It's Bailey back in front through the mud, the blood, the beer here at Pasadena. David Bailey in front and Glover is trying to go around him. Alan King of the Factory Suzuki in third. $198,000 on the line for David Bailey if he can pull it off tonight. And the pressure on this young man is incredible, but look at him fly. David Bailey, number 11 in front. Glover running in second spot and King in third. Glover and King over the jumps. Hey, 
Meanwhile, back in the pack, young Jeff Ward gets off. Ward trying to double jump and goes right at his head. Oh. A very dangerous part of the course, the double jumps. Meanwhile, Bailey out in front, looks behind him. Glover right on his tailpipe, two bike links back. And Bailey is riding like a virtuoso. Bailey to the inside, Bailey to the outside, and Glover can't figure out how to get around him. The crowd evenly divided between cheering for Bailey and cheering for Glover, and Bailey is riding a flawless race. Heat number one, the passing the Rose Bowl, the Miller High Life Super Bowl of Motocross, the granddaddy of them all, and David Bailey is on his way to picking up a record paycheck. slower riders in this first heat and getting into traffic and that's where it's dangerous but Bailey still managing to keep ahead of Black Glover blocking Glover fading causing Glover to try to go to both sides and Bailey continues to block him a beautiful job a battle between Honda and Yamaha and Glover is frustrated Bailey heading for the checker, and there it is, a cross-up, and David Bailey wins heat number one. With us down here on the track, we have probably one of the most consistent motocross riders in history today, David Bailey. We understand that you study tapes before each race and after race to see what you're doing wrong. Does any of that come from your father? Well, a lot of it does. Uh, it was pretty much his idea for uh, the videotapes to come into the sport. He started videotaping me uh, about two years ago. And ever since then, it's been nice to watch the films, uh, you know, for riding techniques as well as other riders' techniques, and just for the joy to have the films, because a lot of times my mom can't go, and it's just videotaping has uh, really kind of taken over in the world today, and you can just observe everything that you're doing out there on the racetrack to try to improve. And to show us what going around a Supercross track at the Rose Bowl looks like from a rider's viewpoint, Here's David Bailey's father, Gary Bailey, himself a champion in the early 70s, taking a helmet camera around the course here at Pasadena. Through the left and right hand turns and over the jumps and down the straightaway at close to 70 miles an hour through the grass because the Rose Bowl had the first grass track ever at a Supercross in the United States. Bailey, 40 years old and still a good competitor in Supercross, hitting 65, 70 miles an hour down the straightaway and over the jumps. And finally, coming up, the Miller Mountain, the highest jump ever at a California Supercross, right where our Recreation Network camera is positioned. Uh, is the course any different because it's a grass course than anything else you've been on in terms of stadium crosses? Right now, it's uh, a lot duster than most. It's really dry out there and powdery. Most stadiums are harder and uh, it's more packed and it's, I think, a little better. This one's kind of dusty and it's turned into a, uh, basically a one-line track, you know, one really fast place to go. Okay, so say you don't have the best of starts and you're in second place. What's it going to take to catch a guy? Are you going to have to wait for his mistake or where do you make up? Uh, you just have to ride aggressive the whole time and uh, look for any mistake and charge the whole time, you know, and hopefully he'll get tired or something will happen to him. The jumps, do you actually attack the jumps or you charge on the flat sections, whatever there are on the course, and really hit the berms? Uh, what's the key here in terms of making up time? Well, in the stadiums, you really have to charge everywhere because there's not a lot of time, and the, the track's pretty small. It's, like a, it's only about a minute long, 59 seconds, and uh, you really have to attack every part of the course in order to to uh, pull away or catch the guy in front of you. Other than falling down, what is the worst thing that can happen to you? Popping out of gear, or what is the worst mistake you can make out there? Uh, probably if you don't make a double jump or you know land front wheel down on it, hit the next jump, you can go over the handlebars. There's a lot of things that could happen out there. The worst thing that could happen is your bike would break and you, you couldn't finish the race, but uh, that's mechanically, but physically, uh, you can get hurt anywhere, really. Semi number one, and David Bailey again lines up next to Brock Glover, but this time he's also got to contend with Mark the Bomber Barnett. The key drops, and into the first left-hand turn, it is Brock Glover and David Bailey on the inside. 
Exactly as in heat number one, Bailey takes the lead early. Up the uphill, it's David the Bandit Bailey out in front. Brock Lover running in second spot. Barnett back in mid-pack over the jumps. Bailey looking at the biggest payday of his young career out in front, and Glover is intent on taking it away from him. David Bailey in front, Glover running in second spot, and Mark Barnett moving up strong about in fourth spot. Here's Glover on the outside, not Glover on the inside, over Miller Mountain. It is Glover on the inside taking the lead away from Bailey. Whoa, Glover gets sideways, and Bailey takes the lead. It is Bailey back in front, Glover second, and Mark the Bobber Barnett in third. And Barnett is about as tough as a $2 stake. He's running in third and moving up behind Glover. Barnett is tenacious. He's got shoulders about six foot wide, built like a football linebacker. And he is on you. He's on you like a bulldog. And Glover knows that Barnett's behind him. Bailey in front, Glover in second as they come around the hairpin turn, and the Bomber Barnett in third. that the only man who can take the championship away from him is Mark Barnett. And he's trying to open up a big lead as possible early in this semi number one. Scott Burnworth going over the, the big jump right here in front of us, the Honda Himalayas, and almost going on his head, but he stayed right on the gas and saved it. Most riders would find himself in the cheap seats. David the Bandit Bailey, he is cooking out in front of the blood red Honda. And Glover, the golden boy from El Cajon, the proud young man, over six foot tall, in second spot on the factory Yamaha, the hero of San Diego last year. With Barnett in third, and Barnett's got his work cut out for him to try to get around Glover, because Glover is tough. That's true, the pressure has really got to be on the bomber right now, because he has got to set the pace here. Unless he can get around and prove that he can beat Bailey, that final event could be over as soon as this race is done, because Bailey's going to have all the confidence in the world. Anything could happen in that main event, but, but right now, David Bailey is looking awfully good. All three of them, there's poetry in motion with the finesse of a brain surgeon. They put those bikes down in the exact spot, the exact spot on the track they want over those double jumps. Glover rams into the rear of David Bailey. Get out of the way, he says. And here comes Bailey on Miller Mountain. Scott Burnworth and Alan King right now are getting ready to come up and over Miller Mountain. They will round out the top five positions. Remember, only the top eight will have a chance to transfer to the main. Look at that, Brock Lover! Over at the Cage Street Towers, he killed his engine. He is barely in third place. And what an opportunity for Barnett. And look at Barnett, that sneaky little devil. Moving up now, the number 11, Bar Bailey. Here is the battle between the two guys who are going to go for all tonight. The Champagne Borean Gold. David Bailey on the Honda and Mark the Bomber Barnett on the Suzuki. And I know that both factories have ordered champagne, and I'm not kidding. We talked to Chip Hinnon earlier, the Suzuki. He says, we put the order in for champagne because Barnett will win tonight. And Neil Leventhal and Honda says, no way, it's going to be Bailey. This is what everything has come down to, is these two men right here. They've what we've been hyping for the last month. And those two guys right there is where the entire race is going on. As we said before, it is up to Barnett to prove himself this race, and he has got to climb up to Bailey quickly here. We're already on lap number five. This is an eight-lap event, the Honda Semi number one. We've got one more semi coming up. That'll be the Diet Coke coming up next. say that so far from the lap times that we've been clocking up here, which have been right at that one minute mark, both David Bailey and Mark Barnett have been running identical times. The only difference as far as I can see, Larry, has been that David Bailey got off to a great start where Barnett did not. Bailey is riding very aggressively and a lot of people didn't expect him to do that. They thought he'd take it easy, but look at Barnett move up behind Bailey. They jump over the, over the Honda Himalayas through the sand pits and Bailey is holding out of the lead. John Segal waves him by. He doesn't want to get anywhere close to that battle. David the Bandit Bailey in front. Barnett in second spot stalking him like a hunter stalks the game. Over the Miller Mountain. We are in lap number five. And Bailey is holding onto the lead and the Honda engineers are jumping up and down. In fact, the whole Honda team is watching Bailey. Bailey gets a little sideways in the jump. Bailey, Barnett moves right up behind him. Throws 30 feet, a rooster tail in the air. Here's Bailey and Barnett and Barnett's got him! Slammed into him and Barnett has taken the lead. 
You know, over there in that dirt bike super berm, Barnett would have gone down had he not had Bailey to lean on. Bailey was his crutch. David Bailey has now got to take the chance of pulling out in front or trying to take Barnett or letting him pull away. Coming back up in third place now, we got number six, Brock Glover in third. Number 16, Scott Burnworth right now in fourth place as they get ready to go up and over towards the Jeep Jump at the south end. Johnny O'Meara running in fourth spot. Barnett flying over the Miller Mountains. Greg? Back over to the KHJ Towers. You can see right now number two, Barnett from Bridgeview, Illinois, has got the advantage that he's been looking for. However, Larry, correct me if I'm wrong, he is going to have to accumulate more points than just a win here in the semi in order to close that gap. It will come down to the main event. He's still, uh, still got, got the lead. Bailey still has the lead, and it's going to come right down to the main event. But Barnett is looking off. We're watching his line. Watch, I thought earlier that Barnett might be having some trouble with that rear tire, but it doesn't look like it. I tell you, the killer line that he has got is right down at the bottom of the Wrangler runaway. You'll watch, and he'll go very deep into that big soft stuff. That's where he passed Bailey two laps ago. Watch it next time around. This is the Honda Semi number one. Eight laps, and Mark the Bomber Barnett is living up to his name as he's bombing the bandit. You know, out there on the track, you'll see the winning line, Bill Helmet's winning line. Bell's the leader of the industry with over 29 years of experience in producing the state-of-the-art product, which meets Nell safety standards and many international standards as well. Bell, warned for the best. The white flag is out on the track. This is the last lap of the Honda Semi-Main. Down there at the beginning of the Wrangler runway, you saw that crank line that right now number two, Mark Barnett, has been able to master. That's how he got out in front of Bailey, and that's where he's sitting right now, going up into the Bell Burr. The final lap, Mark Barnett in front, David Bailey in second spot, and Brock Glover in third. Here's the checker. And Mark the Bomber Barnett serves notice to Bailey. The main event is going to be a knockdown drag out brawl. Barnett takes the win, Bailey is second, and Brock Glover's in third. And you've got to wonder what's going through David Bailey's mind. Last chance qualifier, and only the top two from this race will transfer directly to the main event. On the outside of that long starting lineup, number 21, Steve Martin. And a Cinderella story, Marty Typhoon Trice, who won the first and second Super Bowls of motocross, is back 10 years and 30 pounds later. They line up and lean forward. Here's the start, all important. And out in front, a pair of Hondas, number 21, Steve Martin. And number 19, Kenny Keelan. It is Martin and Keelan out in front. Tripes in the middle of the pack. Over the downhill jump. Number 19 jumps into the top position, Kenny Keelan from Brooksville, Florida. Honda running 1-2 right now. Behind Kenny, we got number 21 in second place. That'll be Steve Martin, 224. Roddy Lachine, the racing machine in third place. Marty Tripes in fourth. This promises to be good. Our sentimental favorite right now in fourth place. A lot of people hoping that Pro Circuit will be able to bring Marty Tripes into the Miller main event. Wouldn't it be something after winning the first two Supercross races down at the Coliseum if Marty Trice could come back and win the first ever Supercross here in the Pasadena Rose Bowl. Now look at that race for the lead. It's Honda versus Honda. Number 21, Steve Martin from St. Petersburg narrowly takes the lead away from Kenny Keelan. Kenny still in second place, Lachine in third, Trice in fourth. Any one of them has a shot at it. Only the top two will transfer to the main. Right now, Honda looking pretty as we work through lap number two over at the Honda Himalayas. Number 21, Steve Martin going up high. Look at him go, Lachine! Lachine making the pass in midair to move up into second place. He is only 16 years old. Ronnie Lachine, who one year ago was still running on the Sunday amateur events, right now with the big boys. Tripes is down. That is Marty Tripes. 
He is okay. He is back up on his feet, but out of the race. A terrible break for Pro Circuit's Marty Tripes. He had a shot at the main event, only to have it taken away just before Miller Mountain. Now direct your attention over towards the north end. Number 21, Steve Martin. Not the comedian, but a wild and crazy guy in his own right. This Honda rider right now has got a second and a half lead over Ron Lachine, who many say may be America's next big threat in the motocross field. If this guy can handle Supercross at the age of 16 the way he has this season, just wait until he matures and turns 21. Number 19, Kenny Keelon on a Honda, still in third place as they go over the Jeep jump out on the south end. Right behind Keelon, it's like the Suzuki moving up into fourth. That's number 54. That'll be Donnie Cantaloupe on a Yamaha. So Cantaloupe is not yet out of it as they go up and over Miller Mountain. Cantaloupe in the yellow jersey up and over the Cami T Rockers on the inside, right behind Keelon as they fight for third place. Remember, only the top two will transfer, so third place is critical. Friends, don't forget to register for the Diet Coke sweepstakes. The lucky winner tonight will win a Jeep. CJ7, a year's supply of Diet Coke and a year's subscription to Dirt Bike, Motocross Action, and Motocross Magazine. Get your entry blank in the event program or from the Diet Coke sign-up crew working the gates. Rider profiles, event scorecards, and all your event descriptions are in the souvenir program now on sale around the stadium. The Pasadena JC is helping us out there. We've got a race for first place. Lachine is moving in on the lead at Miller Mountain. Lachine up into second place. Would like to carry some momentum into the final. And if he can come off with the last chance win right here, that would be his momentum. Currently the leader, number 21, Steve Martin. He started off the race in second place. Moved up into the lead soon after that. Lachine had himself a good start, but got bottlenecked in the very same turn he's going through right now. He had to fight his way back up through the pack, and now he's in second place. If they can both hold their position, they will transfer to the main event. The question remains, who's it going to be, Honda or Yamaha? Let's watch the Himalayas. Lachine likes to fly. He goes up. Lachine on the inside through the 7-Eleven sand. He did not make his move there, but mark my word, that is where Lachine will have his best shot at the lead. You've seen Lachine pass in that very same situation twice. Into the Cami T Rockers right now. In the blue and white, out in front, number 21, Steve Martin in second place on the Yamaha, Ron Lachine. Let's see what happens right now as they go up the Wrangler runway. Lachine on the outside lost some time in that big stuffy berm. Back over to the big bell berm on the north end. You can see we got our Miller corner marker over there marking where the leader is. It's that bright red siren up there. And now let's keep your eye on the Honda Himalayas. Is this where Lachine will make his move? He's on, the, uh, he's on the inside. He came down dangerously close. Now into the sand. He almost went sideways. He's got the inside into the berm. Not enough time. Lap number six. This is an eight lap of it. Look at this. On the inside, Lachine makes the pass. By Ron Lachine and Yamaha. Watch those mechanics jump up and down as he goes up the Wrangler straightaway. You know they're going to be pumped over there. Martin in second place, number 21. If he's smart, he'll stay right where he is. He's already qualified for the main event, and there's a big gap between second and third. He's already proved that he can compete up on top. If he stays in second place right where he is, he will be in the final event, and he'll have some energy left to spare. to take a special thank you here to all of our rider support contributors like Dunlap, Seat, O'Neill, Hallman Racing, Ansa Products, Bell Ray, Pro Circuit, and Gary Bailey Motocross Schools. They've all invested in the future of motocross and its superstars of tomorrow. 
You know, you get a VIP ticket to every major motocross event in the world when you read Motocross Action Magazine. Follow all the action of Supercross, Nationals, and Grand Prix. Just turn to page S3 in your program and get the hot ticket to motocross around the world. That's Motocross Action Magazine, now available at your local newsstand. The white flag is out. One lap left to go. And for one 16-year-old rider from El Cajon on a Yamaha, this is one very happy moment. He will make it into the main event. Ron Lachine, the racing machine. Off the Diet Co catapult now. And let's see what kind of airspace he can negotiate over the Honda Himalayas here. Off number two, he plays it safe. Then again, if he's got the final event to go through, maybe you can understand why. Number 21, Steve Martin, still in the number two spot. The checkered flag will greet them at Miller Mountain. Let's make sure this 16-year-old can hear you. Give him a warm round of applause for Ron Lachine from El Cajon. So Ron Lachine and Steve Martin will round out the final two positions here after finishing in the top two spots in the Cheap Auto Parts 7-Eleven Last Chance Qualifier. And what about your machinery, Brock? Are you happy with everything? Everything, everything seemed to be going well? And... Yeah, Yamaha's been giving me really good support, and uh, the bikes run really fast, and uh, I think that makes a difference, especially down here on the start. It's a long start, and it's very important to get in the turn first. You know that. Right. And the heat, is that going to cause any problems whatsoever? Well, I think all of us will show fatigue at the end of the night, there's no doubt, but we're all highly conditioned, and uh, hopefully I shouldn't have any factor on it, especially as it cools down towards the evening and the end of the night. Great, Brock. Good luck to you. Do your best. Thanks, buddy. Bruce. All right. So the stage is set for the Miller Main, the largest first place payoff in Supercross history. Down on the line, David Bailey, and you got to wonder what's going through this young man's mind. Top contenders, number six from El Cajon, California, Brock Lover. Number 11, David the Bandit Bailey. Number two, Mark the Bomber Barnett. And number 224, Ron the Machine Lachine. They line up for the main, and here it is, 20 laps and 67,000 people are standing and cheering. The gate drops. And out in front, Glover, Brock Glover in front, gets the whole shot, Scott Burnworth in second spot. But Glover, a beautiful start for the young man from El Cajon, California. Glover off the giant jump, second spot, Scott Burnworth. Bailey is back in mid-pack. Danny Magoo Chandler running in third spot, Ron Lachine in fourth. So the golden boy, Brock Glover, opens up the lead early in the main event. 20 laps, the best Supercross riders in the world. Scott Burnworth in second, and Danny Magoo Chandler in third. Chandler trying to go into second spot ahead of Burnworth. It is Yamaha in front. Chandler and Burnworth battling for second as Gary Bailey anxiously watches his son's progress in the middle of the pack. David Bailey battling back around seventh spot. He's got to finish sixth if Barnett finishes no further high than second to take home the champagne glory and gold. In second place, you can see a Honda taking off into it right now, going down the Wrangler straightaway. Honda mounted number 22. That is Magoo storming into second. Danny Magoo Chandler is riding like Charlie Manson into second spot. It's Glover in front, Magoo second. Burnworth sitting in third. Holly in fourth. In fifth spot, 224 Lachine. Then Barnett. Then Johnson. Then O'Mara. Then Bailey. Brock Glover on a new works Yamaha in front, in control. But there's 18 laps to go. There's plenty of time left, Larry, and as we pointed out all night long, there is plenty of room to pass on this Miller High Life Super Bowl of motocross track out here. The track is in excellent shape right now, and these guys have got a long race in front of them. 
I think probably Greg Bar uh, Barbacovi, it's probably the easiest track to pass. We've seen so much passing tonight, and that makes for incredible racing. Glover in front. Chandler in second spot, riding like a crazy Huck Finn. And moving up on Glover. Barnett right now is trying to storm himself up into fifth place. You can see him right now heading up over towards the big bell berm up on the north end side. At this point, it looks like he's only one bike length down just in front of him. We got number tw uh, 224 there. And so Ron Lachine just barely holding that advantage over. Remember, Ron just barely got into this race himself, and look at the position he got himself in. 16-year-old Ron Lachine in four, uh, fifth spot, looking good. Bailey in, or uh, Barnett in sixth spot. Remember, Bailey has got to finish fifth or better. Now, we've got to check the points for a confirmation on that, because right now he's running about eighth. And Barnett is in front of him, but I think that was predicated on Barnett winning the main event. Now watching Glover go over those KMT rockers there, and that tail end is bouncing all over the place, but his arms aren't budging at all. He's racing right now with as much confidence as he possibly could, and look at the gap that he's got at the end of the Wrangler straightaway. That's a good three and a half seconds, so number six from Team Yamaha has got plenty to be proud about on lap number four. We're in lap number four. As, as Greg said, it's still Brock Glover in front, riding a beautiful race. This kid is tough. Out in front with a big lead, Chandler all over the track. That's been his trademark for years. He was known as a Berserko crazy rider. He tempered that, was picked up by Team Honda, and has blown away the best in the world in the outdoor races. He's still not quite master of the stadium, but Chandler is gaining on Glover now. Not only that, but Barnett is really beginning to gain on Ronnie Lachine back there in fifth place. That's a two-way race going up and over the Jeep jump now at the south end. Look at him over at the Miller Time board. Less than four bike links separating those two. Barnett has got to move soon. Mark the bomber Barnett all over the track. The Suzuki chopping, trying to get through that sand, that sand pit. A little bit easier. Barnett, is, as we say, all over the track, trying to pull every bit of horsepower out to try to move up on Lachine. Speaking of all over the track, Larry, as Bailey was going over the KMET rockers there, he almost bailed right there, right at the tail end. His tail end shot way up on the high side of the berm, and he had to plant his foot real fast in order to save the bike. That would be a tragedy for Bailey, and he's got to remember, he's got to keep his head in this, in this type of pressure. He can't let it all hang out. He's got to just ride conservatively enough to stay in front of Barnett's points lead and we're checking on that right now meanwhile Barnett in fourth spot fifth spot rather trying to move up in front of Lachine right now I think everybody can see that Barnett and Bailey are beginning to get a little bit closer to each other Lachine is not holding Bailey uh, Barnett back at all I don't think you can fairly say that as we said earlier both Honda and Suzuki have ordered champagne chill for this tonight's race Honda fully expecting Bailey to take home the champagne glory and gold and Suzuki just as sure, or maybe not quite as sure, as Barnett's, from our, Barnett's chances to win the title, the Supercross title. It's right here in Los Angeles. The Pasadena Rose Bowl comes right down to this on a hot summer evening. You know, to show you just how intense this final event has become, for those of you that are close enough, take a look at the big dirt bike super berm. Up until the final event, everybody was going about three feet outside, but right now in the main event, a new berm has been constructed that is just inches away from that bale. That's how intense this final event has become. Number six, Brock Glover over the Miller Mountain in front, just about to lap number 21. And that's Steve Martin on the uh, support Honda. He goes around it, no problem at all. There's a Chandler. Then number 16, Scott Burnworth. Then number 224, Ron the Machine Lachine. And then Barnett. And behind Barnett, O'Mara. Then behind O'Mara, Jim, gentleman Jim Holly. Then Ricky Johnson, number eight. Then number 11, David Bailey. And we're trying now to get the point standings to find out exactly where they stand. We've got to try to get word to the AMA to find out where, where Barnett and Bailey are at this point. I believe Bailey will still win the championship if he finishes in this position if Barnett does not win. Well, then that puts all the pressure right back on Barnett's shoulders there. He's got the door open in front of him. Now it's up to him to go and take the bike crashing through it. He has got to at least get by Lachine in order to make any progress here. Ron Lachine, a 16-year-old whiz kid from Southern California, a rookie, signed by Yamaha, and he has just blown everybody away. One year ago at this time, Larry, he was running on the Sunday amateur program, and now he's out here with the big boys. Proof positive that you can graduate into this program. All you young riders sitting out here, this very well could be you out here one year from today. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Not me, buddy. 
In front, Brock Lover, second, Magoo Chandler, third, number 16, a surprise, Scott Birdworth on the Suzuki. So it is Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, the first three, then Yamaha, Lachine, fourth, and number two, Barnett on the Suzuki in fifth. But Barnett is trying every trick in the book of motocross to get around the elusive Lachine, and Lachine is blocking him. You know, with Bailey dropping back as far as he has, you got to believe that there's something wrong with the bike. I've been watching it closely. There's no flat tire on the machine. So there's a chance that maybe there's something wrong with the pipe or he's losing some compression. But I can't believe that Bailey's at full force right now. Brock Lover won the doubleheader Super Bowl of motocross back here in 1980 at the Coliseum. And it's been a long dry spell for the Super Bowl for him. But he is uh, looking awfully good and he's going to be tough to catch. He's... We're in lap number nine, and Brock Glover, the golden boy from El Cajon, California, is riding an absolutely flawless race at this point. Boy, Brock making a small mistake that could have cost him something had he not had the big lead there. Just before he went up on the big hill over there in the north end, you saw him lurch way over the bars. He probably lost a second and a half of an advantage there. But then again, since he's got 10 seconds over second place already, what the heck does a second different make? Nothing. That's the advantage to jumping out early. Well, at this point, we've got the word that if Bailey takes fourth in the, in the standings, regardless of where Barnett finishes, he will still win the Super Series championship. So we'll find out right now. He is running in eighth spot. Number 11, David Bailey. But Barnett is running in fifth. I believe that will still Give Bailey the championship, and hopefully we'll be able to find out. Second, third, fourth, and fifth place all over at the KHJ Tower section right now. Those guys pretty equidistant from each other. Uh, Barnett beginning to creep up a bit on Lachine. Remember, Barnett was the rider that had that crank line coming out of the big berm on the way down to the Wrangler straightaway. So maybe now that we're into lap number 10, he's finally beginning to goose the throttle a little bit more. He's got to get around Lachine and start to work up through the standings to get those points. Brock Glover double jumping beautifully on the new works Yamaha. Please stay off the field when the race is over, ladies and gentlemen. We have the, the trophy presentation coming right up. Glover holding on to the lead. Second spot, Magoo Chandler. Then a freight train of three bikes very close together. Burnworth, Lachine, and Barnett. Barnett is trying to move up. He's looking at that overall series win. You know, Lachine almost made a classic mistake back there just before the Jeep uh, jump over there. He went way high on the berm and forgot to stay on the gas all the way around. David the Man at Bailey sitting in sixth spot. He can win the $198,000 if he finishes in this position, and he knows it. His father anxiously watching. Oh, look out! Alan King almost going down, and he saved it. All right, in front, still Glover, beautiful form, over the double jump. Second spot, Magoo Chandler riding like a man possessed. Then in third spot, Burnworth, then Lachine, 324. And Barnett, who is getting increasingly frustrated by his inability to pass Lachine. Magoo Chandler has now got a new third place to contend with right behind him. Ron Machine. Ron Machine the Machine. In third spot, moving up on uh, Chandler. Glover still has got this race in his back pocket if he can hold on and not do anything stupid or break. And who would have guessed at this stage of the race that he would have had an eight and a half second lead? We're in lap 12 of the 20 lap Miller main event, ladies and gentlemen. Larry Hoffman and Greg Barbacovi up here in the booth. Hal Sanguinetti in the field. Brock Glover lapping Jeff Ward, number nine. 20, uh, 22. Chandler now getting pressed by Lachine. Watch Lachine! No, Chandler gets away from him. Lachine was just not in his favorite spot there on the track. He usually likes to go far over to the left to launch himself off and to try and pass it. First, he tried it over to the right, and so I think he just didn't have any confidence in that part of the jump. You know, it's going to be interesting to see, Greg, if Suzuki gives uh, gives Scott Burnworth, number 16, the signal to let, to let Barnett go by. He, they are teammates, and it's been it's happened before when uh, Hannah had to let Glover by to win the 125 championship about five years ago. Let's watch and see if Pat Alexander Suzuki give the, fig, give the uh, signal to Burnworth to let him go by. 
give the pick. I don't know if he will or not. It's going to be interesting. So far, Burn with his pulled away. Glover in front, uh, Chandler in second spot. Then Lachine, Burnworth, and Barnett. These guys are riding like a pair of mental patients over these jumps. They're crazy. I don't know if you saw it, but I think Magoo kind of anticipated what Ron had tried to do because Magoo ended up veering over to the left side at the last second to cut off Ron's path. So a little bit of strategy went on there. Magoo's got eyes in the back of his head, and he knows Lachine. He knows a lot more about riding Supercross than Ron Lachine. Ron is lacking a little bit on experience. Barnett has moved up into fourth place. We can't tell you if it was because of signals or because he earned it, but he is up in fourth right now, and once again, he will have to trail Lachine. Mark, the bomber Barnett has got to get around Lachine. We're in lap number 15. Second, third, and fourth place. Coming down off the Diet Coke catapult, just as close as you could possibly ask for. We may not have a hot, close race for the lead of this race, but second, third, and fourth has been tight all night long. Look at Lachine try and go for it again. He doesn't quite have the altitude that time, though. Look at Barnett running in third spot, or fourth spot, like a tenacious bulldog. We'd like to thank Diet Coke for being a part of this Miller High Life Super Bowl of motocross. And remember, you can get it both ways, caffeine and no caffeine. Diet Coke, good to have you with us. The attendance tonight, ladies and gentlemen, a, a record for the Rose Bowl. Well, it's the first race of the Rose Bowl, but still a mighty good crowd. The approximate attendance, 68,000 fans here tonight. Give yourself a round of applause. All right. Oh! Lyles goes down and goes down hard. The end of the front straight away. Also over on the other side in the dirt bike, Super Berm, Lachine bunching up right again behind Magoo. Less than a bike length separates him. Now Magoo almost made a mistake going up the hill. Back down off the catapult, we're setting it up for another Himalaya final here. Barnett is in fourth, Bailey is in eighth. I believe that will still give the title to Bailey, but hopefully the AMA will let us know. We're waiting to hear from the AMA on this one. Whoa, Lachine is trying to pass Chandler! You know, Lachine will not get on the gas over there in the Himalayas unless he's over on that left-hand side. Again, he backed off at the last second. Barnett making a boo-boo up there in the big berm just before he came down off the Jeep jump there. Again, he went up way high and lost at least one second. You can see the gap between Lachine and Burnett now, twice what it was just a few moments ago. You can also see Scott Burnworth staying just far back enough from uh, Barnett not to mess things up. His teammate, wait a minute, there's some kind of a problem. Rider down over the big double jump. It's number eight, Ricky Johnson. Over the Miller Mountain. He got off hard, but if he's all right, he's up trying to get back on the bike. He was running. On the north end, Lachine spot. right underneath the Honda. This time it didn't quite pan out. Ron has got to set himself up right as they get back over here to the Himalayas. Ron is worried about Barnett. He's riding his tailpipe. Greg trying to get around him. So Lachine's trying to stand in front of Barnett and trying to get, get past number 22, Chandler. These big machines are really destroying that first Honda Himalaya. If you look at the condition of that one, you can see the dark, deep grooves in it. That's because that's where the guys have to start the throttle in order to jump over Himalaya number three. We are in lap 17, ladies and gentlemen, the Miller High Life Super Bowl of Motocross, the final race, the main event. And the battle is not between Barnett and Bailey. They're far apart on the track. Everybody's watching this battle between Chandler and a 16-year-old kid from San Diego, Ron Lachine. And here's Barnett! Barnett is going in front of Lachine! And you know, Larry, the way that Mark Barnett set himself up for that, he found that nice, smooth outside line at the base of the Wrangler straight away. He got his momentum off in the correct manner and set himself up just right. That's how he got by. It took him this long to find that line. Now back over at the Himalayas again, Magoo just barely out in front of Barnett as they go into the 7-Eleven Sandpit. Make it three bike links now as they're over on the south side by that big Miller inflatable can of beer. It's Miller time out here tonight, folks. Enjoy some while you can. Look at that dog fight. Miller Mountain is the site. Those guys less than a bike link apart, and we almost had the bomber up into second place. 
Mark the bomber, Barnett, but now Lachine is hammering back at Barnett. He wants to get in and mix it up. Barnett is holding a threat, but he's got a crazy get in his tailpipe. Ron Lachine all over the track trying to take out Barnett. Barnett is going for all the marbles. He's looking for an overall victory here. And as soon as we get the word from the AMA, whoa, Barnett almost goes down. We'll let you know the point standings. At this point, you gotta believe the 16-year-old owns no fear. He's never been in this position before. He's gonna go bonsai the last two laps. Danny Magoo Chandler trying to hold on to second spot. Barnett trying to take it away from him to go into the lead overall. And in front is Glover, and he's got a ticket to ride to the main, uh, the main event. We're in lap 19. Over at the KHJ Towers, Barnett is beginning to run out of time. If the white flag's gonna be out next time around, he's got to get closer to Magoo than he is right now. He missed that nice firm that he likes so much over on the east end. Bailey is still in seventh spot. Number 11, Bailey. Sun hero of this race, Larry, may very well be number six out in front, Brock Glover. He's so far out in front, we haven't had anything to say about him. Look at Barnett ram into, into Chandler. It's incredible. He's all over the track, trying every trick. Look out! Oh, he almost loses it. A lesser man would have found himself in the cheap seats. Chandler in second spot is riding the race of his life. Barnett is frustrated. He can't get around him. He's trying every line, every trick. Watch number two. Incredible. I've never seen Barnett ride like this before. The white flag out. Barnett has got to pull out all the stocks. Forget Glover. Watch Chandler and Barnett. Over the cage tree towers goes Barnett right behind Chandler. Lapping riders almost at will now. Meanwhile, Barnett is all over the track, snarling and snapping at Chandler, trying to go into second, almost losing it. Number six, your leader, Glover, second place, number 22. Chandler in third spot, number two, Barnett. One lap to go, the white flag out. And look out, going over the double jumps. Barnett is going into second spot. Barnett is one rider away from a $200,000 payoff. If he can catch Glover, and Glover is slowing down. The checkered flag, he's got it. Brock Glover wins the Miller High Life Super Bowl of Motocross. Mark the bottom, Barnett is second. And third spot, Danny Magoo Chandler. But finishing sixth and wrapping up the Supercross and Super Series Championship, David the Bandit Bailey. Brock Glover, three-time Super Bowl champion, golden boy of motocross. You rode fantastic, buddy. Thanks, Bruce. I felt really good tonight and, uh, you know, had a little troubles in the heat race and semi running in the back of uh, installing my machine one time. And uh, I, uh, I, I got it all together for the main. I felt real smooth, and I'm glad it was in the main event and not in the other races. Well, you made a fantastic start, and I think after you got by that first corner, you just nobody even got close to you. It was just really good, and I don't think any of the pressure affected you whatsoever. What do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, it's very important here at the Supercross is once the gate goes down to be the first one out, and it's, uh, that's the whole thing, to get the start. Once I get the start, you know, and then I don't have to eat anybody's dirt out there, it makes a big difference. I felt smooth, rode my own race, and once I can do that, you know, I ride fairly well at that. Great win for Brock Glover. Thanks a lot, Brock. <laughs> David, you didn't win the race, but I'll tell you what, you won the championship. How'd you feel? Uh, I feel good now. During the race, I didn't feel good. I was so nervous, I couldn't ride. And uh, next time, I'll know how to handle myself. That's the most pressure and the nervousness I've ever been in my life. I was literally shaking every, every lap of the main event. And uh, I rode well in my heats and semis up until the main, but when the pressure was actually on, I had to do good. And Mark was riding so well tonight, I, I didn't know what to do. And it was hard to pass. I had to, I had to pass riders. Rick Johnson fell in front of me, and I got by him. I, I think I ran over him. I hope I didn't hurt him. And uh, I passed Jim Hawley. And I, once I came by the mechanics area after I passed those two riders, the, my mechanic, Cliff White, said, hey, you got it. You got it, the champ. You know, and I, just, I still couldn't believe it the whole time. Those last two laps seemed like an hour. And uh, I'm just so happy now. Well, you did enough to win the championship. What about the heat? Did the heat affect you in any way? No, the heat wasn't bad. I Just the pressure, all the pressure, the prestige. And, 
everything at stake, that just took its toll on me, and I wasn't able to ride very well. Well, I'll tell you what, you did a fantastic job. Rose Bowl, I think you'll remember for a long time. Congratulations. Thank you, Bruce. Here you go, one more big game. You. Executive producers Mike Goodwin and Tom Tatum. Directed by Edward LaPel. For the Recreation Network, I'm Larry Huffman. Yeah, I do in a way, you know, but uh, I've had my day and... Uh